Hi, everyone. Welcome to Alive with Tanya. I'm Teacher Tanya, and today I want to talk about the best practices for learning English. Really, for learning almost anything, but specifically for learning English, learning a foreign language. So if we haven't met before, I'm Teacher Tanya. I live here in the United States. Currently, I live in Southern California. And one of my favorite things about teaching is getting to interact with you and speak with you and have conversations with you. So here on YouTube, I like to do live videos where we can talk. You can leave comments in the comments in the comments when we're live are over here. But if you're listening to this recorded, feel free to uh, leave your comments below so that we can interact with each other. We can chat with each other in the comments. So if you've met me before, you probably know that I love to have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee while I'm uh, teaching when I'm speaking to everyone. And so I'm making myself, this is actually coffee, even though it's in a tea bag. Uh, so while I'm doing that, let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. And I'd love to know who's here. I see that we have a few people joining us live. Let me know in the comments, what's your name or where are you calling from or both? Tell me just a little bit about you and why you're learning English. And let's start by talking about the topic of what are some of the most important things you need to do when you're learning English. So let me be more specific. When you're learning, we talk a lot, a lot about what to do, like you need to learn vocabulary. You need to learn grammar. You need to learn, uh, not, pardon me, not what to do, what you need to learn. Vocabulary, grammar, uh, phrasal verbs, all of these kind of things. But what do you need to do? What are the practices you need to put in place? Hello, Jovita. Nice to see you. It looks like you are, you put your flag. I have to admit, I need to learn more about the flags. And I have learned uh, a few of the different flags around the world, but it's easier for me if you just write the your con country. But welcome, Jovita. I hope I said your name correctly. And Jamal, I see you are listening from Hol Holland. Wonderful. Okay, Lithuania. Okay. I'm going to remember yellow, blue, red stripe, Lithuania. Welcome. So I'm curious, are you all following me from, did you hear about this from YouTube or Instagram? Because we talked about this just a little bit ago on my Instagram, uh, Instagram page, Instagram feed, Instagram live on Instagram. I, I don't even know the best way to say that. So anyway, um, Oh, wow. I just put a lot of creamer in my coffee because I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, so over on Instagram, ah, Jovita's from Instagram. Hi, Gladys from Venezuela. I saw that you were over on Instagram. Welcome over here. We talked about some of the things that are definitely important, which are speaking. You need to write. You need to uh, be consistent or practice regularly. If you were over on Instagram, put in the comments some of the things we talked about because there were some great suggestions on things we need to do. Um, and the person who came closest to what I'd like to talk about today said that we need repetition. We need repetition. Um, and a lot of people, when they think of repetition, including myself, think about, okay, if I'm going to learn, for example, the flag from Lithuania, I need to repeat over and over. It's yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red. And yes, that is going to be helpful. But I want to talk about another aspect or another part is another way to say that of repetition, which is review. So 
when I say this word, most students are like, oh, we don't want to review. Either that's boring or we want to learn more is what I hear the more the most. I want to learn more. I want to learn more because I want to be fluent. So if you want to be fluent, give me a like. <laughs> I know this is what you want. Let me know in the comments if this is one of your main goals or if you're just doing this for fun, which is possible. I just recently started learning Korean um, because it's fun for me. Um, I probably am not going to use it a lot uh, in my daily life, but I'd love to. Um, okay, Gladys says shadowing. Yes, shadowing is one of the things we talked about that's very important. Um, so review, let's talk about review. How, why? First, let's talk about why is this so important, how to do it, and is it possible that this could be less boring? So I think the why, why it's so important is going to help it be less boring because reviewing is a huge, huge thing. It's something you definitely need to do to become more fluent. There's a misunderstanding that if you learn more and more and more and more, the more you learn, the faster you'll become fluent because you want to know all of the language. And I totally understand that. I'm learning Spanish. I feel the same way. Uh, and really what we need to do is to be able to use what we already know. So going back to my example with the flag from Lithuania, repeating yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red is going to help me in the moment. But if I really want to remember this, I need to review it. Not today, another day. And if I want it to really stick in my head, I need to review it more than once. I know students don't like it when I say that, but I just am giving you the hard cord, the hard cold facts. I'm going to put that saying in the in the chat so you can see it. The hard cold facts. When we say something is the hard cold facts, we mean it, you may not want to hear this. It might be difficult to hear, but it's it's real. It's true, and it we say cold because it's not warm and inviting. Um, so this is a phrase you could practice saying if you want to practice now while we're uh, while we are talking. This would be a great phrase to practice. And let's use this phrase as an example. Have you heard this phrase before? Let me know, yes or no. Have you heard this phrase? Write it in the comments here. Have you heard this phrase, yes or no? Um, if you've heard it before, you just reviewed it. So yay, you get a point for that one. Um, if you haven't heard it before, but you want to use this again, we can use this in business. We can use this in our uh, conversation, daily conversation with friends and family. I just used it here. I could use it um, if I was giving a presentation. I might to, let's say, a customer or a group of business colleagues. I might say, okay, I've told you all this. Let me give you the hardcore, hard hard cold facts, which are the most important thing. This is just the way it is, whether you like it or not. Um, so a, a little bit of a more less direct, maybe a little more warm way to say it or a warmer way to say this is to say, let me give you some concrete ideas. Let me give you the con some concrete ways of doing this. So let me put that in here. Let me give you some concrete ways to do this. This is a little different. The way we use this is a little different. Uh, but one of the really important things is a little aside from our main topic is learning different ways to say the same thing. This is huge for becoming fluent. And I have other videos on this. Um, I will tag I can't remember if it's here or here. I will tag the video I'm thinking about here on different ways to say the same thing. Um, 
it's really important to practice doing that. And once you've learned it, back to our main topic today, you need to review it. So I'm going to give you a little tip right here that I give my students when they take classes with me. You've learned two phrases in this video. If you just joined us, you can go back and watch the recording when I post it. You need to review these, these two phrases. One way is to watch this video again, but don't do that tomorrow. Do that in three or four days. Tomorrow, I want you to look at your notes. Hopefully you've been writing some notes and you've written down the two phrases, the hard, cold facts, and let me give you some concrete ways to do this. You've written this down. Tomorrow, I want you to look at your notes and review it. When you're reviewing, what's key is to relate it to your life, something you can relate to, something that actually happens in your life. Okay, I'm getting so excited, I forget to drink my coffee. Um, so, for example, if you work, let's say you work in an industry where you have to give a presentation to your colleagues, to people you work with. What I want you to do is think of a time when you are giving the presentation to your colleagues. Think of your colleagues, visualize or see their faces and think about who they are and who you're going to be talking to. And imagine yourself saying to them, I need to give you the hard, cold facts of this project or this idea or this set of information. And that way it will become something in your brain that you can see. Another hugely important thing, but for another video. Um, and then do the same with the second one. Let me give you some concrete ways to do this. Um, that's your first review. Next, just maybe another day you're on the bus, you're uh, waiting in line somewhere, you're just going to go over. Maybe you took some notes and wrote down. This is a really good idea. Write down your examples, speak them out loud, put them in your phone so that when you have a couple minutes somewhere in line waiting for somebody, whenever you read over your examples. Now that you've got sort of an idea of what these mean, how to use them, you've made some examples in four, three, four, five days, watch the video again and see if your examples meet some of these examples. So let me give you another example of the hard, cold facts. I've already given you a few examples, but I'm going to write a, an example sentence. Sometimes we don't like to hear the hard, cold facts. Okay. This is something you want to think of. Notice I put an article, the, the article is the, in front of this phrase. Sometimes we don't like to hear the hard, cold facts. So we're using this phrase as a noun phrase, the hard, cold facts. We have some adjectives. We have a noun. Look at this for yourself and kind of get so you understand it. And when you review, look at your examples and see if you're using this phrase the way I've used it here. Okay, the other way to review is to set up some times. You can write it on your calendar if this is something that works well for you. I know it works well for a lot of students. You just have a little note on your calendar, review, and you put it on a few days. Then Take some time to review things you learned two weeks ago or a month ago. And then ever so often, every so often is the correct way to say that. I said ever so often. We do this a lot in our native language. Review something you learned months ago or a year ago. This may seem a little tedious. Tedious is another word for you. Maybe it's difficult. It's, it's too, uh, what's the word I want to describe tedious? 
There's too many uh, details to this. And it is going to be helpful for you. If you haven't been doing this, this might be something that will make a difference in your language learning journey. So I want to see what your questions are. If you have a question on this or any of the phrases that we've talked about today, put your questions in the comments while I take a drink of my coffee and look at that flag that is the one I'm learning from Lithuania. It's so small on my screen, I can't see. I can't see if it has more detail than the stripes. But one of the things I will do is look this flag up on the internet. This is one of the ways I will review. Um, so are there any questions? If you're listening live, put your questions in the comments. If you are uh, listening to the recording, put your comments in the comments section. I check my comments very regularly and I get back to students and, and we can have a, a chat in the comments. This is a way to interact, which is another important thing for learning a language is to interact with the language, with people who speak the language, native speakers, language learners. Yes, speaking with another language learner will help you to become more fluent. You may have heard me say this on other videos. Um, I'm curious how many of you have seen my most recent video, which has been my most popular video so far. I will link it up here in the recorded version. It's a, it's a story that I have, a story about my life that I've turned into an English learning lesson. Um, so if you haven't seen it, I hope you'll go check that out. I will link it up here. Um, and if you have seen it, let me know in the comments here. Hi, Julie. Julie is, uh, has, looks like maybe you have just joined us. Welcome. It, we are wrapping up. Here's another phrase. We are wrapping up. We are almost to finish. I'm answering questions. Um, but if you didn't see the first part of this video, it will be recorded and you can see it there. Uh, Vinicius says that he hasn't seen it yet. Vinicius, if I'm saying your name incorrectly, I apologize. Be sure to go check that out. Um, and it looks like Jovita or Jovita. Oh, I think it's Jovita. She gave a thumbs up. I'm going to assume that means you've seen it. Um, so you can correct me if I was wrong about that. All right, everyone. I am so glad you joined me here live today. We have several other live recordings of me similar to this one that you can find on our YouTube page and lots and lots of videos about grammar, vocabulary, phrasal verbs, all kinds of things like I talked at the beginning of this video. Hopefully this was helpful. And thank you. Thank you for your kind comments here in uh, the live comments. And I hope to see you on other videos here on Instagram, here on YouTube or over on Instagram. And I'll see you there. Bye-bye.